Good afternoon and welcome to Agri-Food Conversations, brought to you by iSelect Fund, Van Trump Report, the Yield Lab Institute, and Family Farms Group. My name is Tom Bunn. I'm an associate on the iSelect Fund Ventures team, and I'm excited to welcome you all to our discussion today. Agri-Food Conversations is all about driving innovation in ag. Each month, we highlight a specific theme, and this month's is indoor farming. And on today's call, we are joined by Dave Nichols, uh, the Director of Strategy at App Harvest. App Harvest is an Appalachian-based indoor growing company that is building some of America's largest greenhouses, combining conventional ag techniques with today's technology to grow non-GMO, chemical-free produce. Each of you knows companies are more likely to succeed with the right network of customers, talent, investors, and advisors. We've invited you today uh, to this call because you are some of the smartest, most talented people in App Harvest market. You are potential customers for their products and services. You've built a company similar to theirs or you are a sophisticated business person or ag professional who understands their market and the challenges and opportunities that they will face. Before we get started, we have a quick poll question to get a better idea of who we have on the call today. Please take a few seconds to answer. A few process comments. Uh, while the poll is finishing up. We are not soliciting investment in any way whatsoever. This presentation is to provide information to help App Harvest find customers, mentors, or other strategic relationships that can help them grow their business. Secondly, you are all on mute. However, you can use the chat window to ask a question at any time. Finally, this presentation is being recorded and will be available for replay. So with that, I'm pleased to introduce Dave Nichols of App Harvest. Take it away, Dave. Thanks, Tom. Uh, thank everybody I select for having me. This is a great opportunity to speak to everyone here. I'm really excited about it. Um, as Tom said, App Harvest, we're, we're a developer of large scale controlled environment agriculture facilities uh, in Kentucky. We are focused on providing fresh fruits and vegetables, uh, quality fresh fruits and vegetables uh, for, the, for the US. We open our first facility will be is in Moorhead, Kentucky. We'll be planting in a month. Uh, it'll be, it's a 60 acre facility of uh, planting tomatoes on the vine and beefsteak tomatoes. We're a mission-driven company. We were, were founded with the mission to bring a new industry back to Appalachia, a region that was hard hit by the loss of the coal industry. Uh, we've researched a lot of industries, found this is a great industry to bring back, great jobs, uh, great uh, a mission to re rebuild communities. So I, it's really our, our big focus here. Um, the market, so Wageningen University, it's the number one ag tech university in the world. It's in the Netherlands. They recently did a study uh, on the market and the need for controlled environment ag in the US. Uh, that study said we need 20,000 acres of new glass production uh, to replace the, the imports from Mexico. Uh, it's, a, it's, a real, it's a growing industry. Uh, the UN report, UN has two reports out. One, we need 50% uh, more food by 2050. The second report was from the UN IPCC. And that was the best uh, advertisement you can get for controlled environment agriculture. That report was focused on climate, climate change uh, and soil degradation and the shift uh, of areas where we can grow food in the world, uh, how climate change is affecting that. It's, it's reducing soil and just changing the, the bread baskets of the world. And really controlled environment ag is the best way uh, to adapt uh, to climate change. Uh, COVID was also, uh, I mean, a big, uh, kind of eye-opener for the industry. I mean, there were times in the U.S. when people were just happy that the, they went to their grocery store and there was food on the shelves. Um, it's kind of brought a little bit of a, a focus on uh, the, the risk in our system. Uh, we, we've met with several of the largest grocers talking about how they really want to have domestic supply. They don't, though we don't want to rely on international supply for food. Uh, 30, 32% USDA report, 32% of all produce our fruits and vegetables are imported into the U.S. That those numbers are even worse for our focus crops of, of tomatoes, cucumbers, bell peppers. Uh, upwards of 60% of each of those. Leafy greens is a little bit different. Most of those are grown in Salinas, California, and, and Zuma, uh, New Met, or Arizona, and trucked across the country. Uh, and obviously, California. Those are water going through structural droughts, and California has running out of water and uh, is currently on fire. So we, we really see the opportunity to build at large scale uh, in the center of the country, in Kentucky, where we can reach 
70% uh, of the U.S. within one day's drive. Uh, this is a picture of our first facility in Moorhead, Kentucky. Uh, we've been very fortunate in the, in the capital markets. Uh, we have investors uh, behind us. We've raised $150 million to date. Uh, this is our kind of a, a timeline of our first facility uh, going from Greenfield up there in your upper left to uh, in, your, in your lower right, almost complete. As I said in the, in the, in the beginning, we will be planting in the end of October, uh, the first 30 acres and hope to have uh, fresh tomatoes on store shelves uh, right before Christmas. We've been very fortunate with our investors. Three of our, our really uh, biggest investors, Rise of the Rest, Steve Case Fund, who came out with the brilliant idea that 90% of the, of the VC money is, goes to either San Francisco or New York. Uh, there's a great opportunity in the middle of the country. I think a lot of us on this call will agree. So they, they founded this fund with a mission to, to bring VC dollars to, to middle America. Uh, Jeff Ubbin has been a, this, one of our early investors, a, a, Great supporter for the company and Equilibrium Capital, both a investor in the in the facility and in the court in the company, uh, and very proud to have all all of these guys on on board our team. We really, we're, we're biased, but we think we have the best board in agriculture right now. Uh, we've everybody from Martha Stewart, uh, Dave Chen of Equilibrium, who's probably one of the smartest people in the controlled environment ag universe right now, uh, to David Lee, who recently joined our board, uh, CFO of Impossible Foods really gives us um, a strong backing to, to tack on a big challenge here. Our, our goal, I mean, we, we wanted to bring an industry, not just a facility, uh, to Eastern Kentucky. Uh, we, we, Kentucky, why Eastern Kentucky? It's 70% uh, of the U.S. population we can reach within one day's drive. We, we, our goal is to build an ecosystem here, uh, not just kind of, we modeled it after the Netherlands, uh, where there's uh, 10,000 acres of greenhouse, or sorry, 20,000 acres of greenhouse, 10,000 companies supporting it. <clears throat> we, that, we partnered with, we went to the Netherlands, we kind of studied what they did, um, met with a lot of great partners over there. We were fortunate this year uh, in June, uh, we signed a collaboration agreement with uh, 17 companies, or se 17 people, 17 groups, and seven companies, several universities, uh, the governor of Kentucky, uh, Netherlands government, and, and uh, five colleges in, in Kentucky and two and two in the Netherlands. This really is kind of the, the foundation of our ecosystem. We've we've studied the industry. It seems to be that the industry is, is very successful when it clusters. Uh, clustering in the Netherlands, uh, a, a large cluster of controlled environment ag in Leamington, Ontario, areas such as Israel and Spain. So we we didn't want to build one greenhouse. We wanted to build uh, an ecosystem that will will drive growth, drive down costs, drive innovation and really create a, a whole new e economy in, uh, in Appalachia. As I said, we're mission-based. We're mission we are a registered uh, benefit corporation and also a, a certified B Corp. Uh, a benefit corporation, that, that's, a, that's a corporate designation that allows us to stay true to our mission. Uh, we have, it allows us to not only uh, take, take all stakeholders into account, not just shareholders. So we have uh, fiduciary responsibility to our employees, uh, to the to the environment and to the community, so that really helps us stay on mission. Uh, we are a certified B Corp. Uh, we just got our B Corp certification, I think, about a year ago. Well, and we're we're very proud of that organization. We we think we're one of the only uh, companies in agriculture that is a certified B Corp and a benefit corp. Uh, on that mission, uh, we focus re really uh, hard on UN Sustainable Development Goals. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with those. It's a group of, of initiatives set up, set in by the UN to, to foster sustainable development across all areas of the economy, agriculture, industry, real estate. Uh, <clears throat> we've chosen these six goals here uh, that we feel we can really uh, make a difference in the world and, and impact society. Uh, we, one in 10 Americans currently eat enough fruits and vegetables. We, we think that that is, um, we've seen it during COVID. Uh, we need to be healthier, healthier society. Um, <clears throat> water, water is a problem everywhere in the world, uh, whether it's China, India, I mean, even at home in California, you, you look at tr tr uh, controlled environment ag versus traditional agriculture, we use 90% less water. Uh, we're, we've designed our facility uh, to have zero agricultural runoff. Agricultural runoff is a major polluter around the world. We've got a special system. We've got a 11 acre, um, retention pond 
and a closed loop irrigation system that allow us to run completely on rainwater. We capture the rainwater on the roof, put it into the pond, run it through the system, filter it with only UV and sand. Uh, it allows us uh, to meet these goals. <clears throat> and it's kind of a, we are an impact company, impact by the, some of the numbers that, that we kind of measure ourselves and, and strive towards to, to deliver on our goals here. Um, Kentucky, 70% I mean, of the US population in one day's drive, it makes it a great place to build a produce hub. And that, that's, we're, we're starting with 60 acres, but we have an aggressive build out plan uh, over the next five years. Uh, like I mentioned water, um, retention pond, <clears throat> of zero agricultural runoff and LEDs. We are the largest uh, LED facility uh, in the US uh, running with a, par a partner Signify. Um, that allows us to get more lights to, to the plant uh, and use less energy. Why Kentucky? Um, it, we, we founded the company with a mission to, to rebuild, rebuild the community. It's got the, some of the hardest working people who have had uh, been devastated by the loss of coal jobs, uh, over 50,000 jobs lost in the last 10 years. It's really been a complete destruction of an industry. Uh, and and we, want to, we want to rebuild that industry. It, it's, you, we are building our facility in the poorest congressional, congressional district in the US. Um, it's, it's an area that needs, that needs hope, that needs, needs good high paying jobs with, with uh, worker progression, the ability to, to, build, to build a life and make a, make a living wage and, and, and grow. <clears throat> in, in labor, one of the biggest factors uh, in agriculture right now, it's a challenge for everybody from, from the farmer to the, to the greenhouse operator. COVID, I mean, during COVID, there was, there was times when we were worried that we weren't, be, the, as a country, we weren't be able to feed ourselves because we couldn't get immigrant workers into the country. We, we really want to create an experience for our employees. We want to give them a living wage. We want to have, have a progression where they can go from being a, a crop worker to an, uh, a manager to an ass assistant grower all the way to a grower. It's, it's, it's really exciting what, what controlled environment ag, the opportunities it offers to our employees. And we, we want to really make that stand out and make it, make it kind of our strength. Uh, it's, we're one of the only facilities in the U.S. that we run entirely on, on local, local labor. <clears throat> Growing our own growers, it's, I mean, it is a, a, a very high value skill set to run one of these facilities. We, 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 we have high, some of the top guys in the industry running our facility. We understand as we grow, we're going to have to use education. Education is, is one of our, the core pillars of our values. We started at Shelby Valley High School. Um, one, of our, one of the first things we did was put in a freight farm container so we could train the, uh, in, the students and get them excited about agriculture. So, I mean, we really want to, we, that got the whole region fired up. We've got our first facility opens in October. We've got up to 6,000 applications, which we're super excited about. Uh, and we just, we look forward. We've, We've ordered two more freight farms. We've got a commitment to education, been working with all the local uh, and state universities, local high schools, uh, technical schools to, to really build uh, a structure that allows us to develop <clears throat> the talent to grow the facility from home. I mean, right now we're, we've got growers coming from Arizona, growers coming from, from Texas. We wanna develop that, that talent in state and, and give them the opportunity to run the facilities. App Harvest has been very successful uh, in the press, and I think a lot of that can be driven go, goes to our mission. I um, mean, the mission of, of rebuilding a region that's been so so hard hit has really kind of resonated. Uh, we've had the Wall Street Journal, New York Times, uh, Forbes, CNBC, really just kind of coming to coming to coming to Kentucky, loving what we're doing. Uh, it's it's been really exciting to see. It's really it's really helped us grow as a company. Uh, helped us obviously in the capital markets and. Hopefully, as we move in here to sell into the retail clients, we'll, uh, this, this press will, will carry over. So that's, uh, I kind of blew through that a little faster than I thought I would, but that, uh, that's kind of the app harvest story. Um, I'd love to hear what everybody has, what questions everybody has, turn it over to Tom and uh, <clears throat> let Tom take it from there. Awesome, Dave, thanks so much for walking us through that. Um, not too fast, just right. Okay. Um, minutes, like we talked about <laughs> with perfect um so we have uh some dedicated q a time now um 
for those in attendance, you can either type in a question in the, in the box and I will read it, or you can raise your hand and I can unmute you and you can ask Dave directly. Um, whatever suits your fancy. Dave, we already have a question here um, from uh, the American Society of Agriculture, I believe. Um, they ask, what number is the anticipated non-management labor force at full production? So for our Moorhead facility, that'll be 285 crop care specialists. Uh, so we are, we start, we start interviewing actually tomorrow, which is really exciting. So we'll be onboarding 30 employees a week, uh, starting in the mid middle of October. Uh, we, we start with 30 acres uh, and onboard the crop workers, train them, and then open up our next 30 uh, later on in December. Great. And what's, what's the next facility after Moorhead do you anticipate? Yeah, we've, we've got a pretty aggressive, uh, uh, development plan. We've got three facilities under option right now. We actually purchased a, a uh, land yesterday and have start moving uh, dirt today. Uh, it's, it's in, also in Kentucky. Uh, it's, it's, in, it's in Richmond, Kentucky. It'll be another 60-acre uh, uh, tomato facility. So we, we've, we're, 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 this is, we think, I mean, to, to be a sustainable company, to make a difference in the sustainability world, you have to be scalable. You have to do things at large scale. So I mean, we've got an aggressive development plan that we plan to implement over the next five years in Kentucky and throughout Appalachia. Great. And can you talk a little bit about um, some of the cutting edge technologies you're using to, to kind of fuel that, that rapid scale? Right. Yes. Yeah, so that's a great question. So yeah, we've been, Dalsum is our greenhouse uh, builder and we're, they are one, one of the top builders in the world. As I mentioned before, we are using LEDs. So we're, we're using a hybrid lighting system of HPS and LEDs uh, from Signify Lighting. Uh, we've got, uh, we've developed our own controlled, our closed loop irrigation system with, with, the, with the pond uh, and, and our UV and sand filtration, which as I mentioned before, zero, zero agricultural runoff. We've got a really cool uh, robot in the facility from EcoAsian. It's a, it's a pest identification robot that uses the latest uh, the vision, vision, uh, machine vision and, and AI to identify pests. I mean, that's one, one of the risks we have. We are using all uh, local labor who've never worked in a greenhouse before, so we need to kind of get them up to speed on pest identification uh, as quickly as possible. We've got these uh, uh, automated Bogart carts that, will, that run throughout the facility bringing tomatoes uh, along a concrete path in the middle of each each side of the greenhouse there right into the pack house. Um, we, in, in the future, I mean, we're looking at all types of uh, machine learning, uh, greenhouse automation, uh, robotics. We're working with a company uh, called Root AI, uh, Josh Lessing. Uh, he's one of, one of the smartest guys in robotics, uh, MIT masters developing, putting his skills to work to develop a tomato picking robot. So. Uh, we're really excited about all our partners and all the great technology that allows us to, to execute on our vision. Fantastic. Krishna P um, asks, how do you source your genetics? Do you own them or partner with seed companies? So we partner with seed companies um, and we've, we've spent a lot of time on, on, on seed varieties, uh, especially with to avoid pests and disease. So we, We've got a, a great team, uh, Tim Robinson, who's our VP of production, spent a lot of time with, with our propagators and, and the seed companies to make sure that we had, we had the best seeds uh, for our climate and for, for our, our customers and really and reduce as, as much risk as we can uh, on, on pests and on disease from the seeds. Great, thank you. Bruce German says and asks, coal to cuisine, Coal to cuisine, what's not to like? Pathogen elimination from fresh produce seems like a key value proposition. How do you plan to and demonstrate the enhanced safety dimension? Oh, is he talking about food safety there, I guess? Is that, is that yeah. the question? Yeah, pathogen safety and, and, uh, and food safety. Yeah, so I mean, we've got a real, ex we've got our own compliance team. We've got a very experienced team of greenhouse operators uh, implementing the best uh, in, in food safety and pathogen uh, re risk reduction. I mean, it's, uh, we've got a, a top grade pack house. Uh, we've got all, all the latest uh, uh, sanitary in the facility as, as the workers enter the facility. Uh, for COVID, they're, they're scanned um, with, a, with a temperature as they walk in. So they're, 
they're able to determine uh, if they if they have a fever or not. If they have a fever, we're not letting them in. Obviously, I mean, COVID has brought a a uh, a new emphasis on that. Uh, but throughout the facility, we've got I mean, the latest and greatest in 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 technology and and processes. And as I mean, the biggest the biggest uh, risk reduction we have is our people. We've got great operators. Um, at all levels of the facility, from the head grower to the, the pack house manager to to the a, a group of assistant growers. Uh, kind of one thing I, I forgot to mention we, in in my presentation there, we've hired uh, I think it's eight now assistant or apprentice growers from the region who have the opportunity to to study and learn learn the industry from from our grow team and and build out uh, become head growers in their own right uh, and and run an apple our harvest facility in the future. Great, thanks for that, Dave. Um, Tom Gable says, you mentioned training with freight farms. Is the business model to a farming as a service offering to end customers similar to freight farms? Also, are leafy greens and vegetable products grown intended to be branded or private label or neither? Yes, I'll start with the freight farms. We, we use, we use the, uh, the container farms and with freight farms strictly as a training tool. Uh, we've got a, a program, a high school program which, we, which started in Shelby Valley High School in, in Pikeville, Kentucky, is we've, it's now expanding to three more high schools, and we look to expand it throughout the region. Uh, the, the program teaches basic plant science and then hands-on horticulture in, in the farm, which for us, it's just, it's a, it's a, develops a pipeline of talent into our facilities. Uh, and that's, that's we, we are not using freight farms or, or container farms for commercial, commercial production. Um, we do uh, have leafy greens uh, in our development model. Um, one of our next facilities will be a leafy greens facility. Uh, we've, we've got currently have distribution for all of our, our, our vine crops uh, through one of the largest national distributors uh, in the US. So uh, it's, it's a co-branding. It will have app harvest branding on, on the uh, tomatoes. But I mean, our long-term goal is to develop a, an ESG branded uh, quality uh, chemical pesticide free uh, produce brand uh, in Appalachia. Great. Cliff Rutt asks, is it possible now or is it a goal to market your produce with advantaged or improved phytonutrient content? For example, polyphenol content, lysopene, et cetera. Are you monitoring this or is it just yield? So we, I mean, we want to provide the highest quality produce. I think what we've been working very hard. Uh, we're, we're currently not monitoring the actual nutrition content of the tomato, but we are looking and, and using the, the benefits and health benefits of fresh fruits and vegetables. Uh, it's so important uh, in our society. We saw, I mean, the risk factors from, from COVID, obesity, diabetes, heart disease. I mean, just by changing our diet, give, giving uh, families fresh produce uh, they can put on their table. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, one in 10 Americans uh, uh, eats enough fruits and vegetables. I mean, our goal is to get that up to eight. Uh, I mean, that's, that's probably a lofty goal, but if we can get it to three, four or five, I mean, that, that's, that's, that's job well done. That, that obviously grows our market, but it also uh, makes the whole country uh, healthier, healthier. Fantastic. I'll give it a couple more moments here to see if there are any other questions. Uh, but Dave, in the meantime, um, where can the folks on the call today reach you um, if they'd like to continue the conversation or um, offer help or, or guidance or whatever it may be? Um, are you reachable? Yeah. I mean, drop, I mean, my email, email is the best way. Uh, it's pretty simple. It's Dave at appharvest.com. So drop me an email. Um, we can, Exchange, exchange contact information, kind of a brief description of what they want to discuss, and uh, I'll reach out. Fantastic, Dave. Well, thank you so much uh, to all those in attendance. Thank you for joining. Um, as a reminder, we, we host these calls every Thursday at 3 p.m. Central. Um, we have a new theme every month, uh, so tune back in over the next couple weeks in September and hear about some other cool indoor farming uh, companies. And uh, we uh, will announce the October theme here shortly, um, but uh, I'm sure it'll be a good one. Um, so if you know someone who would like to listen to this, 
Um, feel free to send them a link when you get it. They can register on agrifoodconversations.com. Um, and hopefully we will all see you uh, next week. And again, Dave, thanks for your time. Thank you, Tom. Thanks so much for the opportunity. Take care, everyone.